This broadcast is the property of Codependence Anonymous. Reproduction without written permission from Codependence Anonymous is not permitted. When, when um, Spanish Outreach, our Spanish Outreach World Committee, um, felt that there was a strong need in the Latin American countries and in the Spanish speaking communities uh, for Codeteen to outreach to the younger people. And they brought a motion to conference that they eventually withdrew, but they made a presentation um, at conference um, with feedback that they had gathered from all around the world. Um, And it was very inspiring. Um, And you can also get that on the website uh, on our Coda Team website, that presentation will be available too. And I think it's also available on our YouTube channel currently. Um, so uh, they wanted us to come up with more literature and reestablish Coda Team. So next slide. Um, the, the board took this back, the board of trustees took this back after conference and decided to form a task force um, to look into uh, what we needed to do to get re- Coda Team reestablished and to get more material for them. Um, and we formed a bilingual task force, English and Spanish speaking members. We used interpretation during our meetings, which was very helpful. Um, and then on 2020, in 2022, we brought back a motion to establish us as a permanent world committee. Next slide. Members, uh, Rosa S is our chair. She'll be up next. Uh, Nadia R. is from Argentina. I believe she's online. Um, uh, Lieska F. Venezuela. Marcelo G. from Colombia. Kelly D. from California. Uh, Katja R. Mexico. And she's currently our secretary. Um, Jillian A. from the United Kingdom. And um, me from Maryland as the board liaison. Next slide. Okay, so... Our goals uh, going forward this year, this was presented at the Coda Service Conference also, um, are that we really are focused on trying to reach out and support young people from all over the world, the United States and all other countries. Um, and we, our main goal is to, for teenagers to develop healthy and loving relationships with themselves, others, and their higher power. Um, we are, have worked on a Coda Teen training guide for those who want to host um, and uh, sponsor uh, Coda Teen meetings. Um, in particular, we focus that the adults are just there to guide the meetings. Not um, They're not personal sponsors for the teenagers. The teenagers sponsor each other. Um, but the, you know, the adults there to help guide them and keep the room safe and the teenagers safe. Um, we are at that. We have uh, developed quite a few materials that are now available on the website and were passed at Coda Service Conference this year um, to help with that. A Coda Teen Handbook and other things that um, will be brought up later, but step study guide and things like that. Um, and then we want to um, we want to continue to support and encourage groups and help them in their endeavor to to create these meetings and to um, keep them viable and safe for the teenagers. And we love any feedback. And if anyone wants to join our committee, you're welcome. If you want to give us feedback, you're welcome. Uh, Next slide. So I think, uh, Rosa, are you coming up to? So we were missing a slide, but Rosa is going to read it with some questions she wants to ask of you guys. Good afternoon. My name is Rosa S. from Southern California, and I am uh, currently uh, serving as the CODA team chair. And I just want to take a moment to, first and foremost, recognize the CODA team uh, world committee members. This is uh, a huge task that we've taken upon ourselves. We are um, not very popular these days, you know, this has been a, a little bit of a challenge to take on CODA team to reenact it, to re, you know, I'm, I'm not sure it's not a new committee, but, you know, it's been um, disbanded for 14 years and we had the guts to come back and say, you know, 
teenagers need us out there. Young people need us out there. So we took it upon ourselves to um, to re reenact it, re have it come back. We don't know that we are on this all together, and we uh, collectively have said that we're not here for a popularity contest. I don't think we're going to win a grammar a, a gram a Grammy award. But I think we are going to make a difference in the life of many teenagers out there. And uh, I I was, um, you know, in my thoughts, I was thinking, I was saying, you know, if um, lack of support, um, uh, Florence mentioned that it was lack of support as the, the reason why it was disbanded. And I was just thinking about Ken and Mary earlier yesterday and saying, if they had taken that approach of not supporting CODA, of of being uh, timid about it, or being um, f- afraid of taking on such a project, I wouldn't be here. None of us would be here. And I, you know, I went up to Ken and Mary yesterday, and I thanked them for not for being gutsy, for having the courage to move on and to press on, and. F- Many times, you know, not being popular, but taking CODA to to now, you know, to almost 40 years of CODA. And I just said, if you hadn't been for the two of you, I wouldn't be standing here. My my family wouldn't be standing solid as it is now, thanks to the work of um, that I've that CODA has done through me. And I wanted to just recognize my team and. Um, so with that, I wanted to just ask um, if we could just think about take a, a, a trip back in time and all of us take um, think about our teenage years. Go back to when we were all 16, 18, 15. And remember, if we could all take a moment right now to actually go back in, in time and think about when you were 16. For some of you, it was just last year, right? You know, <laughs> but for some of us, it was, it's been, uh, you know, quite a few decades now. So, and I, I'd like to just ask um, a few questions of the, of the audience, virtual audience as well. How was it for you growing up? Let's do a little bit of self-reflection. Did you cover up your real feelings by pretending you didn't care? I just want us to all think about and then ask those questions. Did you have difficulty saying no? Did you deny your own thoughts, feelings, and needs? Did you feel responsible for others' emotions and or behaviors? Did you make excuses for other people's behaviors? Did you feel like you didn't fit in? Or you had to do things just to fit in and or to be liked. Did you feel sad, depressed, lonely, and or isolated? We don't need to, I do not need to answer me. But, you know, in doing this self-reflection, I had to be honest with myself and say yes to all of the above. And I have a 23-year-old son, my youngest of three sons, and he is my my little, I call him the pseudo-CODA member because he's never been to a CODA meeting, but he's seen me be a CODA member for the last nine, almost 10 years. He knows all about CODA. He's written, picked up the literature. I gave him uh, the blue book as a Christmas gift a couple of years ago when he was ready. He was ready to start reading. And I said, Son, can I ask you these questions? And he's now 23. And he said, Mom, yes to all of the above. Yes to all of the above. And this was two years ago when I was get, contemplating the idea of becoming a CODA teen member. And that was the hallmark to tell me, you need to do something. Because prior to this 23-year-old, I had two older sons that were impacted, affected, traumatized 
by living their growing up years with a codependent mom and an addict dad. So I want to share a little bit about my own experience, strength, and hope. I am the mother of three sons. I came to CODA almost 10 years ago, a 22-year-old son, an 18-year-old son, and a 15-year-old son, all boys. I came to CODA as the result of a, of a very difficult, painful divorce of many years. I didn't have CODA. I didn't know how to help my sons. I had been a mother for almost 20 years, and I couldn't help my sons through probably one of the most difficult life situations that they would ever encounter, which is the breakage of the family. Their dad was gone. Their daddy was gone. And there was nothing that I knew that I could do or that I even knew how to do. There was, I couldn't think of anything that I could do or say to minimize their pain. I know they were in pain, but I just did not have the tools to be able to help my own sons. I was a mother, but I didn't know how to be a loving mother. The only thing that came out of my mouth when their daddy left was in my culture. Men don't cry. And you guys are all men. And everything is going to be okay. I sat them in front of me, all three of them. I came back from work that day and I said, I need to all I need to talk to all three of you guys. My people don't in my in my culture, men don't cry. And everything is going to be okay. And your needs. Physical needs are going to be met because I will continue to work. We are going to stay in this same house. We are going to keep our same dogs and nothing is going to ever change. I didn't know how to support my own sons. I covered my pain and I wanted to cover their pain too. I didn't know. A therapist suggested, you know, during those painful divorce separation years that I go to CODA, I resisted. You know, I didn't know. I didn't know how to stop my own pain, and I couldn't figure out how to stop their pain. I thought they were going to miss their dad, but that was the extent of my understanding. Of course, they're going to miss their dad. But I didn't know how to stop their pain. So I found myself um, in a CODA meeting, you know, I, and sitting in, a, in, in CODA meetings, but not doing program until about three and a half years later, when my oldest son started showing some unacceptable behavior, hurting behaviors to himself, himself when he started doing drugs and started doing drinking. And when I confronted him, you know, in my second son was having anxiety, you know, where um, I couldn't figure out where was that coming from. You know, we were a good family, sure, a broken family, but we were a family. You know, they had their needs met, physical needs were met, there was food on the table, there was a roof over their heads, you know, all the things, the physical things that I thought they needed. You know, not until three years later, so after the separation, the divorce, you know, my son came to me when I confronted him and I, he says, mom, you told me that I couldn't cry. You said that I could not feel, you did not allow me to mourn my daddy. My, you, it was not just another person, as you said, it was just not another person leaving. The person who left was my daddy the only daddy that I knew. And you said I couldn't cry. And drugs allow me to be happy because you wanted me to be happy all the time. And alcohol made me feel good because you said I could not feel any other way. I was already in program, three years into program. And I still could not help my sons. My second son took me on a, on a 
you know, on a trip, you know, and while we were in a trip, he sit, pulled over and he says, you know what, mom? Here, this is my bottle of um, my medication, anti-anxiety medications. He opened up that bottle and he threw all of the pills on my face. He says, you said you couldn't, I couldn't cry. You said I could not feel, and it was my daddy who laughed. You know, by then, by then they figure, you know, I was ready to hear this. I was in program for three years. By then they said, you know, she's strong enough now where she's able, she's going to hear what we have to say. My third son was home confused. He didn't know which way to go. He was only 14, almost 15 when, when this, the divorce happened. I started doing program after four years. I started working the program after four years of being in CODA, doing my steps four and five and all the rest of the steps. You know, at that point, I said, I cannot just be sitting here. I need to start working the program. If I'm going to help these three boys, I really need to figure out how am I going to do this? How, what, how am I going to do this with program? Because obviously I couldn't do it. I was a, a mother, but I didn't know how to be a mom. So here we are, you know, a few years later, um, after nine years of a program, I have to just fast forward this. My sons are doing well. They're functional. They, they are now, they don't know, they don't know, they know about CODA. They have not done CODA but they know about the program and they have been able to see um, changes in their mother. You know, I'm, I, you know, it's whenever is their time, they will be able to do program. But I, for now, you know, for today, I have to say that my sons are able to feel, they were able to grieve. They are able to talk their feelings out without the, you know, the help of uh, medication and or, um, drugs or alcohol. And I just want to thank, I just, you know, I, I'm forever grateful that CODA allowed me to be a mom and not just the mother, not just the mother who provides, but a mother who is connected. So moving forward, fast forwarding this, I just want to say that um, I am forever in debt to CODA for giving me my sons back, for allowing me, for showing me, for teaching me how to be a mom, a mommy. I mean, I'm going to say that word, my mommy. You know, I... Um, Can I have a jalapeno popper? There was right here. You need it? Great. My sons are now um, uh, 32, uh, 28, and uh, 23, and they are doing well. And um, so when the opportunity for Dakota Teen came up, I said, I want to sign up for that because I need to allow, I need to learn, I need to share my story, I need to let other moms know out there that uh, there is a place, that there is help, that CODA is probably the one place where we can find help for our sons. I was there in the middle of not knowing what to do, and I didn't know who to turn to, to help my sons. And I didn't know how to turn. I didn't know. I was looking for help from me as a mom. But my sons were were left were behind me, not knowing who to turn to or what to do to deal with their own feelings. And I just signed up for Coda Teen because I think, you know, just as my sons were out there not knowing who to turn to or what to do during probably the most difficult time in their lives, I know that there are so many teenagers out there, so many young people. And I said, yes. Not only do I need to do this for myself, for my own teenager, sitting under a tree, you know, at 19 years old and wanting to just end it all. 
So this is my way of making amends to Rosa as a teenager who grew up totally dysfunctional. And I, 19 years of age, I remember sitting under a tree, looking up at nothing and wanting to just end it all and not having a place, not having a person, not having anyone to turn to. So I thought about that 19-year-old out there, isolated, lonely, sad, depressed, all of these things that we ask. And I thought about my sons having a mother who didn't know how to be a mommy, did not have a place to turn to. And I thought about, you know, Coda Teen is where we can teach young people that there are other options, that there is an alternative out there, a healthy alternative, a, a you know, a loving alternative, that there is a place that they can turn to other than drugs and alcohol and social media and many other things that they can turn, that they obviously turn to. And um, so I just wanted to say that um, this is what's that, what uh, motivated me to be part of this, of this incredible journey of just stepping up to the plate and saying, you know, let's work on something. Let's give young people an option uh, you know, where they can learn um, loving and healthy relationships, first and foremost with themselves, and then with others and their higher power. Let's give them an option. And I think CODA is the only place that that we can, that where we can give them that, that option, that alternative, you know, and if it's not, you know, it's, if it's up to us, then I'm here. I'm signing up for this, not only to make amends for my own teenager, but also make amends to my own three sons and the many other sons and daughters out there who have no place to turn to. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to the next slide. Jillian, Jillian for the UK is going to tell us what Coda Teen is all about, what the purpose of Coda Teen is, and what is the structure of Coda Teen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rosa. Oh, wonderful chair. Um, I'm Gillian, codependent, member of the Coda Team Committee. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, so here we have what is Coda Team? Well, really, I've got here what is Coda Team's purpose and structure? So to start with, um, yeah. Oh, I've got to eat. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So the common purpose of CODA Teen is to help and support the community of teenagers worldwide to develop healthy and loving relationships with themselves, others, and their higher power. These young people discover that in CODA Teen meetings, there is a safe, kind, and loving space to be heard, a place where they can express their feelings, relate their experiences, and explore their behaviors, a safe place where they can identify and relate to each other and where they can find a common solution by working the Coda Teen 12 Steps and 12 Traditions, the Coda Teen 12 Step Study Guide and the questions, and begin to learn to trust a higher power of their own understanding, the key to Coda Teen Recovery. The teenagers begin to sponsor or co-sponsor each other, much like we did at the uh, inception of CODA in our early beginnings. However, the adult host sponsors do not sponsor the CODA teens. The teens do that for themselves together with the host sponsor's guidance. And the age range um, is in CODA teen groups, uh, is usually 13 to 18 years old. However, each CODA group decides through their own group conscience the age appropriateness for each individual group. The adult CODA host sponsoring group oversees the CODA teen group, helping to give guidance and support with finance, such as renting a room for the CODA teen meeting and providing CODA teen 
as well as Coda Conference endorsed literature, online virtual accounts if required, communications, for instance, uh, WhatsApp or outreach support, transportation together with parents and guardians, and dealing with the administration of the parental permission letter and signing this together with facilitating the essential minimum behavioural and safety requirements for all CODA team meetings. Also, being aware of any other local requirements that need to be met for working with teenagers for both their and CODA adult host sponsor safety. The CODA sponsoring group is key to carrying out Tradition 4. Each group should remain autonomous except in matters affecting other groups or CODA as a whole. And you see here we have some points here. CODA team meetings must be sponsored by an individual CODA group, intergroup, regional or voting entity, and must be registered with CODA World. Local groups, um, intergroups, regional or voting entities maintain adult responsibility for the teenagers whilst they are in the CODA team meetings without the adult host sponsoring CODA groups autonomy would be impossible to establish. And then we have a CODA team meeting may not be registered without sponsoring a sponsoring CODA group. The sponsoring group is responsible for vetting and training adult host sponsors involved with CODA team meetings. The format of the CODA team meeting is run on similar lines to adult CODA meetings. We have the CODA teen conference endorsed foundational documents. Each CODA teen meeting requires these document, uh, those foundational documents to be read for the meeting to be verified as CODA teen officially registered meeting with CODA world. You must register there. And we have the CODA teen preamble. We have the CODA teen welcome the 12 steps, 12 traditions adapted and conference endorsed by CODA for CODA team. However, there are slight differences as part of the long version of the CODA team welcome says, we had met tempted to use others, our family members, parents, guardians, caregivers, teachers, other adults, and even our friends as our sole source of identity. That is part of our welcome for CODA team. And the sponsoring. Um, oh, um, so uh, the sponsoring group is responsible for vetting and training adult host sponsors involved with CODA team meetings. Then we go on to the CODA team committee is responsible for reviewing each CODA team group's process, process for the registration, for the registration approval, approval of, of the CODA team registro. meeting. And that is with and that CODA is World. Yes, the suggested process for setting up a CODA team group to action the host sponsoring of CODA team meetings would be as follows. These are suggestions, but they are really helpful. One, firstly, hold an adult CODA group conscience meeting locally or at intergroup, a region or voting entity. Two, elect two adult CODA members who are over 25 and who have worked and are actively working the CODA 12 Steps and 12 Traditions, have a CODA sponsor and have been a CODA member for at least three years, adhering to the CODA minimum behavioural and safety requirements and are willing to step up and give service as a host sponsor for a minimum of 12 months. See that they are closely and continually vetted and trained by the host sponsoring CODA group to oversee the CODA team meeting, plus extra adult CODA members must also be trained as backup and cover for any absences and to facilitate continuity and rotation of service. These CODA adult host sponsors must be actively working their recovery program and regularly attend the CODA host sponsoring group for support and supervision. However, these individual host sponsors do not sponsor the teenagers. The teenage 
teenagers sponsor or co-sponsor each other as adult CODA members did at the beginning of CODA's foundation. Three, discuss the format of the CODA team meeting. Be aware of the CODA team handbook, which has a vast amount of information in it, uh, 47 pages, <laughs> and have a copy printed and pr present for referral at every CODA team meeting, together with a printed copy of the CODA team handbook, the CODA team 12 steps study guide, and the questions, CODA team preamble, CODA team welcome, long and short version, CODA 12 steps and 12 traditions, CODA 12 promises, CODA affirmations, the CODA opening, opening and closing prayer, and the long version of the CODA serenity prayer. Four, consider a convenient location to hold the CODA team meeting, which is best suited, safe and secure for teenagers, possibly the premises of an adult CODA meeting in a separate room or alongside the adult CODA meeting or after school or even virtually. However, regarding online or virtual meetings, having extreme caution and safeguarding in place, verifying first that pr the prospective member is a teenager and hopefully the adult CODA members have met the participant in person in order to verify the teenager's eligibility to attend a code of teen meeting and to avoid any abuse of the system. Five, arrange the day, date, time, and place of the proposed code of teen meeting. Make sure that the teenagers have advanced warning and that the legal requirements are in place, such as parental guardian permission letter which is, should be signed, and giving permission for the teen to attend the CODA team meeting, as well as the minimum behavioural and safety requirements acknowledged and in place. Announce on social media or posters, flyers, etc., the CODA team meeting in, say, doctor surgeries, nurses' surgeries, schools, therapists and counselling services, libraries, supermarkets, etc., and CODA meetings and conferences and CODA workshops and retreats. Six, adhere to the parental permission letter with parents through guardians, and in some cases, <coughs> excuse me, referral by the therapist, teacher or doctor, etc. The form must be signed before a teenager can attend a CODA team meeting. The adult host sponsor must continually adhere to the CODA team minimum Behavioral and safety requirements. Ahí me escuchan en español. Second, register and specify. Alguien me puede contestar por chat si me están oyendo en español. Voting entity. Ah, muy bien. No one's listening to me in English. Meeting, registering it on meetings at coda.org as a verified Coda Teen meeting. Eight. Download and print out Coda Teen Code and Coda conference endorsed literature as free downloads from the coda.org website and make any literature, booklets, pamphlets, etc., available for the teenagers at the CODA team meeting where age appropriate. Nine, almost finished. <laughs> Purchase CODA conference endorsed literature and welcome chips, etc., to be made available to the CODA team members. And 10, possess a good sense of humor and keep things in perspective. We were all teenagers once and remind ourselves that higher power works in mysterious ways and miracles do happen. What might we have given to have had Coda Teen when we were teenagers? Thank you. Hi, this is Kelly, a grateful recovering codependent. If we could have the next slide. I'm going to be talking about um, a PowerPoint Can that you was. Have the next slide. I'm so sorry, Kelly is Ke Kelly is connecting from Southern California. She is uh, one of our Coda team members. Thank you, Kelly. Um, can you hear me? Have the... We can hear you. Can okay. we have the next slide, please? I'll let you know which one. There we go. Thank you, Kelly. Okay. Uh, Kelly, Grateful Recovering Codependent, and um, I just want to introduce a, a training PowerPoint that was um, a, a divine um, 
appointment one evening. Um, I had never done a PowerPoint. I'm new to this uh, committee and um, I have a uh, strong desire uh, for our teens and to um, see this program succeed um, through CODA. So I've kind of jumped in and I just want to let everybody know that um, a lot of work is being done. A lot of work is being done and we still need um, people. And if you have that burning desire uh, to help some teens, um, please reach out to, to our CODA committee. Um, so training uh, for the host sponsor of a CODA team meeting. A CODA team meeting uh, is the main focus, okay, is for de developing um, a new way of life. Uh, as adult CODA sponsor hosts review, review their ninth step, they may find that CODA team sponsorship is a healthy way of making a past amends wrong. Right. Even when their kids are grown and gone, the opportunity to practice and model recovery for our youth can be a powerful healing experience. The basic purpose of CODA teen meeting is to allow young people to discover a healthy and loving relationship with their higher power, themselves, and others. This happens according to their experience with the step work, sponsorship, and most importantly, identification with others in the group. Seeing others with similar feelings and problems and finding common solutions is the key in redeveloping their trusting uh, trust with their higher power of their own understanding. Next slide, please. Can you hear me? Are we on the next slide? Sorry, I'm on two different. Okay, there we go. Yes. Uh, so the, the first thing we want to do, um, and it is a read, but in my opinion, if you're going to be a host sponsor and you're going to present this to your group to be a host sponsor, um, the handbook. It's kind of a mandatory read. Unfortunately, it's a, it's a big read, but it's everything you need is there. Everything you need is there. So start by familiarizing yourself with the CODA team handbook. And I said, everything you need is spelled out. The focus of this training is down in section three of the handbook. And that's kind of what I'm going to be talking about. Um, and the focus is, down, okay, um, there is a CODA team committee there to support you. Um, at all times by reaching out to the code team at code.org. And we've already gotten a couple emails um, since the conference started. And I'm excited to continue developing this committee. Next slide, please. So one of the um responsibilities of the host sponsor um, is to get this uh, parent guardian padrino, responsibility um, permission una, slip signed uh, and it's in the um, approved literature that we just approved at um, the conference so the permit, uh, parental permission letter um, outlining the parents responsibilities uh, CODA teen adult host sponsors are only responsible for what happens during the meeting. Uh, for medical emergencies, immediate first aid may be given and emergency contact must be notified. Transportation to and from the meeting should be arranged by the parent guardian. Um, so it's important that we get the parents involved, that they're aware that their children, you know, are attending this and um, that we have this information, you know, in case there is a medical emergency. Um, so I know there was some discussion during CSC about this parent uh, permission slip. I had the same concern when I came onto the committee. Um, but by reviewing and being a part of the committee now and understanding that we have a legal department that's actually you know, looked at this information and said that this is necessary. Um, I'm on board with it now. Um, 
it's going to be a difficult task, I know, at times, um, as was CODA in the very beginning, as Rosa alluded to, and now CODA team. Um, but, you know, it, it's in God's hands. And I believe that as we surrender to that higher power, um, that these these things will come to fruition, you know, and there will be some, some understanding uh, by the CODA, by the committee, and um, people that step up to to take on this uh, task as a host sponsor. Um, it's, I, I feel like it's going to kind of be like a regular sponsorship, you know, it's a, it's a big call. Um, but if you have that burning desire and we've had many people reaching out and I'm excited about that. Um, if you have that burning desire, that's from higher power. And uh, it's not something that we have to feel like we're alone in or, or do ourselves. So thank you. Next slide. So another one of the forms that is mandatory, um, and this needs to be given to the parents, um, and also it needs to be adhered to when um, deciding who is going to be the adult, uh, the, the two adults for the teen um, meeting, that these be adhered to. Um, so these are just a few of them. It's not the complete list, but... Um, Every adult coded teen sponsor must work their own program. Okay. Um, we can't do this without steps one, two, and three. And, um, we must be at least 25 years uh, old with a minimum of three years in recovery. And I have found that, um, a lot of people are, are interested in this, um, but don't have the three years. And so, um, this is for the safety of us and the, the teens. And CODA as a whole, you know, um, so we, we serve all those entities, um, and we have to be responsible to all of them. Uh, there may, must be two, uh, host sponsors, uh, present at each meeting. Adult host sponsors must be trained for recommendations and the resources from CODA teen and CODA world. And so we have a handbook. Um, I have designed this, um, with my higher power, I designed this little PowerPoint. Um, but each group is responsible for their own training. I'm happy to share this or happy to help develop it or rework it. Um, this committee is a work in progress. We're not done. Uh, we haven't arrived. And, um, and we're all codependent. And so um, we need to be open-minded and, and uh, receive uh the notion, you know, that this can be improved on, and I'm certainly willing to do that. So um, legal requirements for adults working with the minors uh, must be observed and followed per countries, regions, and states. So there was also some discussion about this, um, that there are going to be different um, requirements. Uh, for us here in California, um, we have something called uh, the Department of Justice, we have to do a background check. We have to be fingerprinted. Um, there has been some discussion with legal and that if you are uh, in some profession that you are getting background checked and fingerprinted on a regular basis for your job, that um, that may be um, uh, used. Um, and But every group is autonomous. Okay. And so as a host sponsor, when you vote, uh, as a group and to take a group conscience to, um, to sponsor a team, um, meeting, you get to make these decisions. Okay. And you get to be responsible for all of this. <laughs> uh, and it's, it's a lot. I took this to our little local group who on the average is about 10 to 15 people. We voted to host a sponsor and be a sponsor group. I presented this PowerPoint, um, but we have had an issue with the minimum behavior and safety requirements for two people to, in order to start the meeting. And so it work in progress. You know, I'm not giving up hope. Um, and we have money put aside now for the background check, which can be expensive. Um, six, I think it's about 60 to $80 here in California. So, um, Baby steps, baby steps. Um, and then always refer to the handbook uh, for 
for, you know, any questions, um, safety questions. There's a lot of information in there and it's very inclusive. Next slide, please. Um, is code a teen for me? Teenager shares. Okay, I think we're missing a few slides. Um, and I don't have access to those right now. So I think I just want everybody to know that, um, let me get onto my, I have my slides here. Um, I'm going to go really quick. Goals and objectives are providing a safe space for the teens to share, guiding the teens to the tools of the program and, uh, support with ba behavior issues. Again, all of this is in the handbook. Um, I have know your role and your goal, the role of the adult. Um, the handbook talks about boundaries. The handbook talks about something called transference. The handbook talks about um, some behaviors and how to best redirect um, the kids back to their feelings and how to help the teens participate. And I have also in this PowerPoint that I've designed, um, made it kind of interactive for, um, and broke it up into 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes. So it's about an hour and a half training that I've designed. Um, and some of the things we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to look for that, uh, the Coda team meeting format. Like we have a format that we follow. Okay. We have something like that in the handbook. Um, find your resources. You know, we're going to teach them the 30 second rule. We're going to teach them for safety sake. Um, we're going to teach them how to introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Kelly. I'm codependent. Um, we're going to talk about um, establishing boundaries and recovery. Um, we as the host sponsors need to be familiar with the chapter five of the blue book. And chapter two of our spiritual dilemma. These are recommendations in our handbook. Uh, we're going to talk about transference and inappropriate disrupt disruptive behaviors. How are we going to handle that? Um, um, so all of this is going to be in the training. It's about an hour and a half training that I've uh, presented right now. Um, I have another slide where um, I have all of the links. Okay. Um, the 12 steps and 12 traditions um, have not been uh, reworked for the teenagers. So we're going to actually use the, the original CODA um, 12 steps and 12 traditions for this program. And, but we do have a step study guide. And let me see, since I don't have it up on the screen. Um, at the end of the training, we're going to do... Um, uh, a slide where we're going to do like a Q and A. We're going to discuss. We're going to we're going to find out if uh, you're comfortable with the resources that you found. Um, some of them are the meeting for format. Um, am I codependent? Um, crosstalk guidelines. Thirty second rule. Um, there's affirmations in our handbook. There's promises. We have some do's and don'ts, and we have um, the tools for recovery and slogans. So there's a lot of information, again, the handbook. Um, our objective and motive is to create a safe space for our teens to share. And our goal is to facilitate as a host sponsor to keep CODA team meetings safe and to provide guidance for them to utilize the tools of the CODA team program. Um, and then we're going to ask every group to identify their community resources. We have, uh, here in California, in, in my county, we have a 211 number. It's kind of like a 911 number. And so do you have a 211 number? Um, do you, what are your mental health resources? What's your suicide prevention hotline number? You know, we're going to help the kids. We're going to direct them, um, to seek out these resources. They're 13 to 18. They're not babies and they're fully capable of um, making some decisions at this age. And they're smart. Our, our kids are smart. You know, they tell us our kids are smart when they're little, tiny, you know, at, at 13, they're developing their adult minds. They're starting to develop adult minds. And so we want to help them think on their own, do some critical thinking, 
what's available to them out there. Do they need another 12 step program? Do they need therapy? Um, you know, what's available in their school districts? Uh, are there, uh, programs available at parks and recreations, you know, uh, facilities around their town. And I just want to say one last thing. Um, let's encourage our kids to get out there and live and not just survive. So thank you for letting me share. And I'm going to pass on, pass this on to, um, Nadia. And, um, she's going to go ahead and talk to us about the resources. Thank you very much, Kelly. And I'm sorry about the confusion with the slides, um, but you did a wonderful job. And thank you for your participation. And thank you for being part of this marvelous team of people who have the heart in the right place. And now we're going to go ahead and hear from one of our members abroad in South America. Uh, uh, let me just double check to see if Nadia is available. If we could get the... So as um, uh, Florence alluded earlier, we went, they went around. I was not part of the task force at that uh, of SPO when, actually, when the team of them went and asked teenagers, how did they feel? What was that like? You know, what was it that they, um, that they, they actually went to other 12-step programs, but they also wanted to hear from teenagers from abroad the SPO, Spanish Outreach uh, Committee. And that's what uh, Florence was saying, that that's really what motivated the board to say, hey, do we need to do something about it? And Nadia from from Argentina is one of our members abroad, and she's going to share with us the next slide, which is um, some uh, testimonials, not only from teenagers, but also from parents of teenagers who are of parents who are in program and uh, also their their teenage son. Um, adelante, Nadia. Gracias, Rosa, por la introducción. Antes de comenzar, eh, porque tienen que cambiar, Mónica, el canal, si, si no pueden colaborar con eso, por favor, para que ella pueda. Uh -huh. ¿Se escucha? Se escucha, no? We can hear you perfect. Okay. Necesitamos que Mónica cambie de canal. Ya, yeah, okay. Gracias. Un segundo, comparto pantalla. Si se escucha bien y si no me avisan, por favor. Bien, soy Nadia, soy codependiente, estoy de recuperación, me comunico desde Catamarca, Argentina, soy miembro del comité de CODATIN. Uh, okay. He tenido la, la bendición, el regalo de, de Dios de poder participar desde la reactivación de CODATIN cuando lo presentó, como comentaba Flores en la historia del, del comité, cuando lo presentó el Comité de Divulgación en Español de CODA, el libro de, el, el libro de viaje, ¿no? el diario de viaje, perdón, hace un par de años atrás en la conferencia, tuve el regalo de poder participar en la fuerza de trabajo y luego en el Comité de CODA ya como un comité permanente de CODA Mundial. Las compañeras que estuvimos participando escuchamos un mensaje muy claro, fuerte y conciso de los, de los adolescentes, de los jóvenes, con los que tuvimos la oportunidad de compartir. Los jóvenes nos dicen que la codependencia los afecta también. A su tierna edad, la codependencia eh, los afecta. Ellos necesitan un lugar seguro para poder compartir abierta y honestamente con otras personas un lugar donde ellos puedan aprender en su tierna edad, en su juventud, cómo tener relaciones honestas y, perdón, relaciones eh, saludables y amorosas con otros. Tuvimos también la oportunidad de poder compartir con los jóvenes que ya están asistiendo a los grupos de Codatín y nos agradecen realmente y es algo tan bonito de poder escuchar el testimonio de los compañeros Agradecen la oportunidad de CODA de, 
de poder brindarles este espacio para poder aprender a tener relaciones honestas y amorosas con ellos mismos, con su poder superior y con otros. De todos estos testimonios que fuimos recolectando, um, el comité comenzó a crear recursos, ¿verdad? Uno de los recursos es el compartimiento, como decía Rosa, de Alejandro, que es un miembro de, de CODATIN, Gilberto y Melissa, que son sus papás. Ahora les comparto el, uno de los recursos que tenemos disponible en los canales de, de YouTube. Tanto en español como en inglés, ahora lo vamos a escuchar la versión que tiene el audio en español, pero tiene subtítulos en inglés. Un momento, ahí lo comparto. The Spanish talker is back on the English channel. Thank you. Did you hear me about the Spanish interpreter being on the English channel? Soy Alejandro, familiar de codependientes. La verdad yeah, es que that, mi experiencia um, ha sido muy buena. Desde los primeros días me sentía yeah. gusto it, it can, do you... Además de la gente yeah. que Thank you. en las reuniones, Go ahead, Nadia. también la forma de cómo decían los compartires. En general fue muy agradable. Sin duda puede ser una grandiosa experiencia para los nuevos miembros de CODA Team. Um, Nadia, y eso es todo por mi parte, pero... Si uh, you tu video... And then go back to where you're screen sharing. There are two little squares. I forget what they say, but it has to do with audio. And that's how the audio would then come through. And also, the other issue might be that you're in the Spanish channel. And you need to be in the English channel to share it here in the English room. We could hear it. If it's, if it's in Spanish... Then Monica, apparently it's it's in Spanish, and then you would interpret it for us if you would. Oh, it has captions. Okay, okay. Then it, then it's really about your part, Nadia, that you need to just yeah make those two boxes checked and re 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 share it again. Hola, soy Alejandro, familiar de codependientes. La verdad es que mi experiencia ha sido muy buena. Desde los primeros días me sentí a gusto con el ambiente. Además de la gente que se encuentra en las reuniones, también la forma de cómo decían los compartires. En general fue muy agradable. Sin duda puede ser una grandiosa experiencia para los nuevos miembros de CODA Team. Y eso es todo pues de mi parte, pero que tengan buenos días, tardes o noches. Nuestro hijo de 14 años asiste a las reuniones de un grupo de Coda Team desde octubre de 2021. Cuando nos pasaron la invitación, hablamos con él y le explicamos de la codependencia, ya que su madre es codependiente. Él se dio la oportunidad de ir a las primeras reuniones y ver si se sentía cómodo. Máxime, que había tenido una experiencia previa en un programa de 12 pasos donde no se sentía identificado. Empezó a asistir a reuniones como familiar de codependientes. Anteriormente, en el otro programa, había que recordarle las reuniones. Y llegó un momento donde no se le insistió más y dejó de conectarse. Sin embargo, desde que entró la primera vez al ver que había más jóvenes y que ellos compartían, no hemos tenido que estar recordándole la reunión. Él se conecta sin necesidad de estar diciéndole. Él nos comparte que se siente cómodo y que se identifica con algunas experiencias. Lo, es, lo hemos visto enfrentar situaciones con compañeros y en el colegio. 
donde él ha aprendido a reconocer comportamientos codependientes, no solo en él, sino también en los demás. Y cuando es así, se aleja y busca corregir lo que debe corregir. Es un proceso, está claro. Y aunque él es muy comunica comunicativo, nosotros sabemos que habrán cosas que él no nos comparte. Y en el grupo se encuentra el espacio seguro para expresarse con libertad. Nuestra intención de que asistiera al grupo es para que él pudiera prevenir la codependencia. Contar con, con espacios de este tipo nos da esperanza, ya que nosotros, sus padres, llegamos a conocer del programa de 12 pasos a los 39 y 43 años, pero él recibió el mensaje a sus 13 años. Damos gracias por este espacio y por los adolescentes a los que están ayudando. Eh, gracias compañeros por eh, he compartido uno de los videos uno de los videos que tenemos disponibles en, la, en las presentaciones en, perdón, en los recursos que voy a pasar a mostrarles a continuación pero previo a esto le doy la, la palabra a la compañera Marcela de Colombia que participó en la creación del primer grupo de Coatín en, en su país, en Colombia. Gracias. Adelante, Marcelo. Hola, buenas tardes. ¿Me escuchan? Sí, se escucha. Bueno, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Marcela. Yo soy codependiente en recuperación. Y se me quiebra la voz porque ese proyecto me apasiona. Me apasiona enormemente. Eh, ya habiendo un, o sea, un proyecto hecho por el comité, porque cuando yo llego al comité, eh, todo lo que se participó en la conferencia ya tenía, eh, estaba tangible, estaba escrito, pero la acción faltaba, faltaba la acción, faltaba eh, mirar el recurso de cómo podíamos eh, habilitar una oportunidad de grupo y yo la vi en mi país. Yo soy de Medellín eh, y acá en nuestros grupos eh, viene gente muy joven, eh, viene gente muy joven, está llegando gente muy joven a recuperarse y yo tengo una identificación con estos seres porque tengo eh, familias muy jóvenes en mi casa, tengo hermanos muy jóvenes y también porque hay una necesidad de recuperación eh, por, por las historias y por esa identificación desde mi historia eh, de infancia con estas historias de los adolescentes que están llegando a nuestros grupos en Colombia. Yo veo una oportunidad gigante y estoy muy contenta porque el Poder Superior me ha permitido eh, estar en este proyecto y el idioma no es una, no va a ser un limitante para mí porque lo que haya que preguntar y de la manera como me tenga que apadrinar para eh, llevar el mensaje y poder seguir a través de la estructura y obedecer a lo que eh, plantean para seguir con este proyecto eh, hay varios jóvenes, son cuatro jóvenes eh, en mi país de diferentes grupos de Medellín eh, yo me acerqué a ellos, los llamé y les dije que había una oportunidad según el manual podíamos abrir un grupo de jóvenes eh, entonces ellos les gustó la propuesta eh, nos habla sobre que una intergrupal puede ser una oportunidad para abrirlo, para ser apadrinados por la intergrupal. Entonces, me dirigí a Intergrupos Medellín, porque hay unos jóvenes que participan, de hecho, en esta estructura, y eh, ellos vieron una oportunidad gigante para eh, abrir un nuevo grupo de CODATIN en Colombia, 
eh, hablamos, eh, leímos la documentación, son cinco documentos que tenemos para, para habilitados para estudiar y estar mirando. Y a través de estos documentos, que fueron las seis mociones que, que se aprobaron en la conferencia, empezamos el proyecto de CODATIN. Y el grupo nos reunimos un día en una cafetería y ellos mismos, yo simplemente soy una, una guiadora del proyecto porque ellos son los que hacen las reuniones, ellos mismos le colocaron, le pusieron el nombre a, a este grupo que se llama Creciendo en el Amor, Creciendo en el Amor se llama el grupo, es un grupo habilitado que funciona todos los domingos a las diez y media de la mañana y está en la mitad de la ciudad, como para que todas las personas y los papás puedan eh, acercarse más fácil y líneas de transporte muy fáciles para llegar a este, a este lugar. Entonces miramos la opción de que fuera en un lugar donde todos se pudieran convocar más fácil ahí. Entonces, en este momento estamos respaldados por los grupos eh, que tenemos en Medellín porque los jóvenes son de diferentes grupos, entonces nos unimos y a través de la estructura estamos amparando eh, este grupo todos los domingos, han llegado jóvenes, tenemos un chat habilitado para los, solamente los jóvenes eh, y bueno, eh, es una puerta que ya se abrió para las, los adolescentes y a través de de un subcomité que se creó de IP, que es el de comunicación, eh, ellos, ellos decidieron formar un subcomité para empezar a llevar el mensaje a los colegios y universidades de Colombia. ¿sí? Entonces, eh, estamos ya trabajando en ese subcomité. Hay personas eh, muy cercanas a universidades y que pueden abordar directamente a las personas que custodian los adolescentes para empezar a llevar el mensaje y decir que en Colombia se, abre, se van a abrir más puertas de Codatí porque el Poder Superior puso su mano para que este proyecto se cumpla. Gracias. Me siento muy agradecida porque estas 24 horas de Coda han sido... Eh, en servicio y me siento demasiado satisfecha por la obra que el Poder Superior hace en nuestro país, Colombia. Y que sea a nivel mundial este Thank mensaje. Thank you very much, todos. Marcela. Gracias. We are going to have gracias. to wrap it up because we're running out of time, Marcela. Bueno, en este momento... Le doy la palabra a una de las jóvenes que hace parte del, del grupo so, Codatín. Um, yeah, uh, uh, no. Monica, Le doy la palabra a una you, de las jóvenes. Uh, come back to the uh, Spanish channel, because um, Rosa is going to speak in English. Thank you very much, Marcela, for your time. And I'm very excited about hearing that, uh, that Colombia has opened up the first CODA team meeting uh, two weeks ago. And um, we're very, very excited. And um, I want to go ahead and take this opportunity. I know we're running out of time, but I wanted to not, fin not finish this um, uh, this conference without letting one of those teenagers and we have in the line, we're going to give uh, Isabel, you know, a couple of minutes just to um, let us know what her experience has been as a member of the first CODA team committee, the, for, the first CODA team meeting in Colombia. With that, Isabel, I'm going to go ahead and just pass it on to you. I know that you speak some English, but I'm not sure if you feel oh, comfortable yeah, speaking in English. But I, I want to just, we need to wrap it up, dear. So I'm going to just ask that you uh, probably just give us a, an overview of what your experience has been as a, as a member of the first CODA team meeting in Colombia. Thank you. In, in about two to three minutes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Bueno, muchas gracias. Mi nombre es Isabel, soy codependiente en proceso de recuperación. Eh, mi experiencia en CODA inició en febrero del año pasado. Uh, hold, uh, uh, Isabel, give us one minute, dear. We need to change the channel. Sí, so, claro. Um, yes. Monica, come back to the English toggle. Come back to your English toggle so we can hear you interpret for Isabel. Thank you. Great. Adelante, Mónica. Perdón, adelante, Isabel. Adelante en, en un minuto porque tenemos que tener tiempo para preguntas y respuestas. Perfecto, gracias. Bueno, nuevamente, Isabel, codependiente. Yo llegué a CODA hace un año y medio. Eh, luego de una ruptura amorosa, llegué a mis eh, 20, 22 años. Eh, había vivido una ruptura amorosa de siete años. Yo me fui de la casa a los 17 años y eh, por codependencia me, me dejé llevar por las sustancias psicoactivas también, eh, porque la rebeldía pudo, pudo con, con mi integridad, ¿cierto? La enfermedad pudo con mi integridad y CODA me devolvió mi integridad, me devolvió el sentido de la vida, me devolvió el propósito. Me enseñó que mis emociones no son peligrosas ni, son, eh, ni deben ser rechazadas, sino reconocidas y direccionadas eh, en, una, en un propósito más grande que hoy en día es Codatín para mí. Eso les quería compartir. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much, Isabel. Thank you for sharing. She's for those of you that didn't hear, she's 15 years old. 15, and she started CODA when she was 13. Thank 24, you very much for your share. Well, I just want to end up where I know we're running out of time, but basically I want to just I'm sorry, 25 years old. Okay, not the 15-year-old. There is a 15-year-old. Uh, Monica, you need to go back to your English channel. To Spanish, I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Well, we want to just give the audience an opportunity to ask questions. Okay, um, this is the time for any questions and any and um, from virtually as well as in person. I, I, I do have a question. Would you like to come up to the mic? Very good. Monica, I'm so sorry. So back to the, the toggle and over to the Spanish. Thank you. No, I don't think so. <laughs> no. <laughs> We're still hearing you in, on the English channel. So, yeah, there's a little toggle. I still hear you. If I still hear you, then you're not in the Spanish channel. Even if you speak Spanish, I'm still hearing you in the English channel. <laughs> That's right. Thank you. I do appreciate, you know, and they're trusted servants. We're not professionals. Nobody is here. So we appreciate you, Monica. Are we good to go now, Carol? Okay. Very good. I'm so sorry about that. Go back. Can we go back to your question? Would you like to come up to the mic so that everyone can see you virtually too as well? <laughs> And, and look at the camera. Beautiful face. <laughs> Hello. Um, my question is, how many registered CODA teen meetings are there worldwide currently, and where are they located? Thank you. Very much. Mm -hmm. 
Well, we have one that started in Colombia two weeks ago that we know of for sure. Uh, we have not been able as a committee, we have not been able to get a, a number, a, a solid number as to how many meetings, because I know we know that there are meetings out there that are not registered. So if they're not registered, there is no way for us to know where they're at. We have been told that there are four meetings in Mexico and that there are other meetings in South America, but not registered, not following yet the structure of uh, CODA team that was just um, vetted and voted uh, yesterday, you know, during CSC. So now that we have, you know, all of our motions were voted, we're hoping that people are going to come forward. But we don't have... Um, yet a uh, number as to how many meetings we don't know that there are any meetings in the u.s since cs since code 18 was dismantled in uh, 2007 but we know that abroad there are meetings so yeah yeah there were uh we i was just told that there might be some meetings in can zero zero uh, meetings in can in canada Columbia as of two weeks ago, it, who are in now in the process of get, becoming registered. Are there any other questions from the audience here in person? Thank you. Come on up. I know, right? She's like up close. It's kind of nice. Um, I just wondered, like, if the literature is already made, is it available to buy? Like, how ready is that? like the literature. Hello, I'm Florence. I'm also the web, web liaison for CODA, and we are developing a CODA team webpage that will be uh, hopefully more prominent on the website soon. Um, and there is literature. We have a CODA team handbook. We have a step study guide. We have a little pamphlet called What is CODA team? Um, all of these things were actually just voted on and endorsed at this code of service conference it had to go through a two-year process um, so they will now become more prominent on the website you can access them now there's a little slider right now that says proposed new literature it's a blue slider that's going across the top of the website and if you click on that you'll find all of the uh, information there um, and um, it's all free and available for download um, and no permission needed or anything like that. And we hope that you guys download this material and take it to your groups and, um, you know, get some excitement going and get some, uh, get a group together and contact. You can contact us at codateen at coda.org um, to get any further information and guidance or if you want to come and be part of the committee. Um, and um, hopefully our webpage will be up soon. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Florence. And thank you to the CODA community for all of the support and for passing all of our motions during uh, our CSC conference. I know that there are some questions on, on virtual that um, I, Jennifer. Hey, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Yes, we can hear you fine. Okay, thank you. Hey, everyone. Jen grateful and recovering codependent. And I just wanted to say thank you for everyone in this committee um, to be able to come together and to put this together, to share this. Um, my question was gonna be if we can bring this to our groups, but Florence just answered that. So um, yeah, that was my question, but I did wanna thank everyone again for putting this together. Someone did reach out to my group not too long ago and we had to turn them away and turn them in the direction of another teen group because we, I didn't know that this was, you know, in the process, but I'm really glad that we're making this available to our teens because I know my teen could have definitely used this. Um, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, well, if only I would have, you know, if I was younger, if I would, would have, could have, should have, you know, just knowing that I found CODA when I had to, when I was ready. And um, yeah, I'm just really grateful. And thank you, Isabel, for coming on and sharing your experience with Coda Teen down in Colombia. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you.
and please contact us at our our you know we are here the the committee is here to help to do anything that we can do to help uh, startup groups throughout uh, the U.S. and abroad too. Okay, we have a question from Robert. Yeah, um, what is the purpose of this for adults? Like, do adults need to join the CODA team meetings or like, I'm not really interested in hosting one, I don't think, but like, can we just participate or, and also can we get a copy of this presentation? I was distracted. I was in and out of this meeting. How do we get the recording or the slides and y'all's contact info? Yeah, the the second question is, yes, the presentation was recorded. I'm not exactly sure where it would be on the coda.org website or how soon it would be available. Hello, Robert, as opposed to Robert M. Thanks for your question. It's um, it's. It'll soon be up, which means, you know, give us about two weeks to get it all processed um, uh, and check back. If it's not in two weeks, it could be a month. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, um, it doesn't always go really quickly, but there's a code, it's a codependence.org. Somebody can correct me. Codependence.org, I think a YouTube channel. And um, so soon it'll be there. What about the con your contact info, though? So could you see this? Do you have the screen? Yeah. Because I, I just put it up there, just an FYI. Well, like for the speakers that were speaking. You can reach them through Coda, Coda team okay. dot, uh, at Coda.org. Yeah. So, and what about the first question I asked? Sure. The first question I wanted to, um, uh, Jillian from um, the United Kingdom, she alluded to the fact that we do have some guidelines that you do have to follow the guidelines. There are some requirements to be a sp an adult sponsor of the CODA teens meetings. You okay. know, there was a, there's, there's a handbook online that is also available that is very specific as to the, the, the guidelines and the requirements. Uh, we did have an age range for, for CODA teens to be members of the, of the meetings and any adult um, the host and sponsor has to qualify, has to, you know, has to actually meet the requirements to become a CODA teen meeting host and or sponsor. So I, I would refer you back to the handbook because, um, yeah, there will be some requirements. This is, we're de dealing with adults and safety is, is our top, top priority. And we have to make sure that the, the children or the, the young people are in a safe and secure place to meet in order to, um, you know, share and um, openly and, um, and grow, you know, um, from uh, any, you know, growing in themselves to learn, you know, all the beautiful things about CODA. So we have a, did that answer your question, Robert M? Uh, I think so. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so now we have another question from a Robert M. Okay, it's, yes. unless it's the same Robert. Yes, I'm Robert M. Um, yeah, I just had, I was curious, uh, I know that this is just gaining traction, I could see the need, a huge need for this actually, and I do understand the obstacles. So I was curious if there are any accommodations for or hurdles to be overcome for online virtual coder community. I know that it seems like with the parental letter leading to uh, adult things and that sort of thing. Are, are you asking if there's hurdles to overcome from the virtual to have an all virtual CODA team meeting? Yeah, I just wonder what the logistically um, is that something that's feasible, something that's that's being planned out. What's what's the process for that? If any, it, we we are assuming that we're going to have virtual CODA team meetings, and we actually did um, consult Can you hear me this our um, you this lawyer way? for CODA. And he said that the same, whatever rules apply in that, the area of the adults who are helping to run the meeting um, will uh, will be considered adequate to also if it's an online meeting. Does that make sense? Yes, I just I wonder if there are additional issues with being online. I, di I didn't hear what you just said. 
I just wondered if there were any additional issues with being online. According to our lawyer, he said no. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for your question. I don't see any more hands up. Carol, do you? Okay. Okay, Danny, we you are going to be our, our last question because we need to vacate this room. There is another session happening soon. So if you could just be brief and concise in your question. Um, I'm Danny and uh, I'm from California, but my meeting is national because it's virtual. And one of the things that I realized in the time of attending meetings is how often disability and chronic illness come up for the people in our meeting and for their family members. And I was wondering if there's any, uh, if anybody working on codeine outreach or literature has uh, thought about or talked about the uh, family dynamics, not only of addiction, but also chronic illness or disability, whether it's the disability of the parents or the young people themselves. Thank you, Stanny, for your question. I don't Gracias know that we have come across as a committee um, with that discussion about disability, but um, about thank disability. you for the question. There, as, as someone say, we are doing baby steps. We are growing on this together. There are so many things about um, codeine and the dy family dynamics that we have not covered, but we are doing baby steps. I'd like to join our committee. I'd like to write your question to us and we, we can address. We are learning on this together. And uh, that's why we are encouraging people to join our committee because we need all the help we can get. We are just doing baby steps right now. We are growing as we're going. And um, thank you for your question. But thank you. That uh, That's a very good question to keep in mind. And with that, I'd like to just thank everyone for joining our presentation and for all of the support. And uh, we will continue to press on. Kids, children, do, young people do need us. They do need us. I want you just to take that in your heart and just tattoo it into your heart. Young people do need us. They need us now more than ever. There's too many distractions out there. There's too many things robbing, uh, robbing them from living a healthy and loving relationships with themselves first and foremost and with others and with their higher power. Please join us today to carry that message to that teenager who's still out there suffering. And we have our contact information on the screen. Thank you very much. Thank you, pe uh, virtual people online. And thank you for joining us. And thank you to the committee.